So, let me get this straight. You know something that could affect Chad's future? And, since I know you want to be in Chad's future for the long haul, what I know affects you too. So spill it already. Well, you gotta swear that you're not gonna say anything to Chad, okay? If you do, it's not gonna happen. I already told you that I wouldn't say anything. But okay, I promise. So now tell me, what secret do you know that could affect Chad's future? And my future with Chad. You know, when I think about how close I came to marrying the wrong man, I mean, Chad's a nice guy, but it's you that I love. My little secret guarantees your future with Chad. And, uh, well, with that assured thing, I'll be closer to getting what I want in my future. Whitney, look, I know you're upset. This isn't about me kissing Sid or any other singer I might work with one day. This is about trust. And if you really trust me, you wouldn't have been tripping on what you saw. Baby, I was surprised, okay? That, that's no, all don't, it was. No, don't say what you think I want to hear. Okay, we got a problem and we need to face it head on. Do you trust me? Deep down inside, do you really trust me? You can't mean this. To say that there's nothing between us, to say that we can never be together again, it can't be over between us, Ethan. It can't be. Teresa, I'm sorry. It has to be that way. I am married to Gwen. We're having a child together, and I'm committed to her and the baby for life. How can you say that? How can, how can I deny it? Ethan, you just told me that if you hadn't found out Gwen was pregnant, you would have asked me to marry you. But she is pregnant, and she's pregnant because I made love to her. You're a man. You have needs. And Gwen was there to fill them. That is all. No, no. I love Gwen. But you love me more. Ethan, you wanted to ask me to marry you. How can you turn your back on that? How can you turn your back on me? On our love. Wait, stop. What? Don't waste Dr. Russell's time insisting that she meet us at the emergency room. I'm not having any complications. I'm not in any pain. Okay. Okay, uh, fine. We'll stay here. We'll wait for Dr. Culver to get back. That way you can see your own doctor, no. okay? No. Then we'll just be wasting Dr. Culver's time. No, you don't know that. I, I, I don't feel the baby moving. I told you. It's asleep. Yeah, well, maybe or maybe something is wrong, okay? <sighs> Luis, I am fine. I am sure the baby is fine. Besides, we don't have an appointment. These women are in front of us. You know what, Beth? I don't care, okay? We're staying here until you see Dr. Culver. I want to hear firsthand that you and the baby are okay. Right? Louis doesn't know. It was Charlie pretending to be Dr. Culver. If he meets my real doctor, he'll know that I tricked him. And then when Dr. Culver says that I'm not pregnant, it won't take long for Louis to figure out the rest. That I kidnapped Sheridan to steal the baby. I won't only go to jail. I'll lose Louis forever. Hey, hey, what's with the sack? What are you planning to do? Are you, are you really gonna kill Sheridan? What is this, 20 questions? Inquiring minds wanna know. Yeah, well, know this, crone. I'm gonna do whatever it takes to distance myself from Sheridan's kidnapping. I'm with Luis dragging Beth out to see Dr. Culver. It'll be no time at all before he figures out he's been double duped. I'm not Dr. Culver, and Bethy isn't pregnant. Then he's gonna figure out the rest. He'll come rushing back here like the blinking cavalry to try to search for Sheridan. Yeah, but this time, this time, he will find her down in the basement. <laughs> yeah. No, he won't. See, I'm gonna get rid of all the evidence that Sheridan was ever here, including Blondie herself. Please tell me, that means you're gonna let Sheridan go? No. Oh, I'm gonna kill her. <gasps> <laughs> Thank you. 
Hey, if someone doesn't help me soon, I need food, water, prenatal vitamins for my baby. Please, God, please let Louise find me. Please let our love lead him to save me and my baby. you I keep your secret, so out with it already. Okay. I'm gonna use my family's money to finance a new record label. Chad's label. Say what? <clears throat> I'm gonna back Chad with his own label. That way, uh, you know, he'll be free to work with up-and-coming artists like yourself, mold them into superstars, and make a fortune doing it. What do you say? It's great, Fox. Really great. Sid? Something wrong? I thought you'd be a little more excited about Chad getting his own label. No, oh, I am. Totally. Good. Good. Because Chad thinks you got what it takes to make it to the top, and then after that, well, the sky's the limit. Chad's gonna produce every song you sing until your farewell tour in, like, 2055 or so. Yeah, well... My future music with Chad is a done deal. So you sound kind of, um... I don't know, disappointed? You did realize I was talking about your professional future with Chad and, uh... not your personal one, right? Whitney, look, don't say you trust me if you don't mean it. This is too important to us, to our future, to lie to me or yourself about. Yeah, I know it is. Then what's the verdict? Do you trust me or not? Yes, Chad. I do trust you. For real? I love you, and I trust you totally. I'm glad to hear it. Look, that Sid kissing me was, was just an L.A. thing. Okay, it meant no more than a handshake or a high five. Maybe not to you, Chad, but as for Sid, I'm not so sure. Teresa, you, you keep talking about fate. Well, you know what? I mean, here it is. This is where fate has landed us. I have a wife and a child on the way, and, and you have little Ethan to take care of. Well, that's if Julian doesn't take him from me. He said, the point, the point is, is that we just, we have to move on and stop looking back. Well, I can't. Because I know that we are meant to be together. You are meant to be a part of my life. Just like I'm meant to be a part of yours. I know that in my heart, and I will never stop believing in it any more than I will ever stop believing in our love. No, if, 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 if you kill Sheridan, that is more than just kidnapping. That's murder! I'm fine. The cops can't prove murder without a body. Like I said, I'm getting rid of all the evidence. <gasps> Oh, no. So you're gonna really bury Sheridan alive in that pit after all? No. Nah, it's too much work. I got a high-tech way to dispose of Blondie and any evidence linking us to her kidnapping. What? Oh, no, not another DVD in Gay Paris. No. I'm gonna destroy this dump and everything in it. <gasps> Precious is right. You can't destroy my house. What are you talking about? You, a couple of minutes ago, you and the ape were hightailing it out of the country. Well, you would never seen this heap again anyway. So what's with the sudden attack of sentiment? Well, I, this is not just my house. It's my home. And I have so many fond memories here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yo. 
Hey, hey, enough to go around oh, for everybody. Yeah. Oh. oh, if these walls could talk. The vice squad would be listening. Uh, you kids are so cynical. You have no sense of what romance is really all about. Or how much penicillin it takes to cure it. All right, all right, all right, enough of this walk down memory lane. I am not going to take the rap for some kidnapping. As long as I destroy this place and everything in it, the cops will have nothing to prosecute me, you, and Bethy. Besides, this place is run down, and it smells. I'll be doing the neighbors a favor. <laughs> and you, you and the ape, you can uh, retire to Costa Rica, and Bethy and I can start over in Provincetown. <laughs> That's what she thinks. <clears throat> so, what's the first step in your plan to destroy my home? Sheridan's put a wrench in our plans more times than I could count. So I'm going to return the favor by putting her out of her misery. I'll be dead soon if someone doesn't help me. Louise. Anyone help me? Please save me and my baby. Angels in heaven! How did all of this come about? Beth and I, we had such a, such a quiet life. She had her job at the book cafe. And I had my TV at class of Sherry. <laughs> then all of a sudden, Beth started plotting this kidnapping and murdering with that, that lumbering lunatic. <laughs> what happened? Why me, angels? Why me? <laughs> you may be hard of hearing, but I'm not. It's all your fault that Beth's life is so miserable she had to take drastic measures to be happy. And I'm helping her out because we're kindred spirits. And soulmates. Only things haven't worked out the way we planned, so we gotta cut our losses. Now I'm gonna clean up this mess and we're getting the hell out of harmony. to you. Was Dr. Culver back yet? Sir, I'm sorry, but that might be the doctor now. Well, good. I'm bringing Beth back and having her examined. Sir, Beth. you can't do that. These other people have appointments. You don't. And as I've said, I can't find any record of Miss Wallace having received prenatal care and here. And as I've said, your records are wrong. Now listen, I was with the doctor when Beth was confirmed pregnant. So, all right, if you don't believe me, then go check with the doctor. Very well. Louise, I hate that we're causing a scene. Look, I am fine, so can we just go? F fine. Beth, look at you. You're dripping with sweat here. No, I'm, I'm, I am I'm. get overheated easily, that's all. And it, it, it's hot in here. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not, Beth. Oh, no. I think you're running a fever. Please, please. No, we are not leaving here until you see the doctor, okay? Come on, sit down. 
Now listen, I feel bad enough that I've put you on the back burner ever since I've been searching for Sheridan. But now that I know that she is safe and sound in Paris, you are my top priority, okay? And as my top priority, I want you to see the doctor. Okay? Hello? Is someone there? Please, if you can hear me. I need prenatal vitamins and something to eat for my baby's sake. You won't be needing prenatal vitamins or food anymore, Sheridan. You're about to be food yourself. Worm food. <laughs> Are you for real? Because, I mean, I knew that you were talking about my professional future with Chad. I was, I was just surprised, that's all. I mean, I never knew anyone who could throw around change like that to start a record label. Uh-huh. I can't wait for Chad to find out. He's gonna be totally psyched. He better well be. Oh, FYI, this is just an investment for me, okay? Chad told me about a couple of CDs that he helped produce last time he was out here in L.A. CDs he never got credit for. And I checked them out, and I gotta tell you, man, I thought they were incredible. So, um, I guess my point is, I'm not really doing Chad any favors, you know? The guy's a brilliant producer. He's bound to make my investment back at least tenfold. He's young, he's driven, he's passionate about his work. That guy throws himself into his music. He does. That guy throws himself into everything that's important to him. But, having his own record label is just part of what I have planned for Chad's future. But, um, if you could do me a favor, don't say anything, okay? My lips are sealed. Except to sing. Good. Good, because I'm sure that Chad's gonna want to take his first singer all the way to the top of the charts and keep her there for a very, very long time. Thanks, Fox. It's really nice of you to say that about me. Sid, I'm sorry. You know what? I I wasn't even talking about you. You weren't? Mm -mm. No, I thought you knew. I, I was talking about Whitney. She's the love of his life, both personally and professionally. Wait. You're telling me Whitney's a singer? Is she ever? Let me tell you something. Chad loves her voice every bit as much as he loves her. Chad's gonna make sure that Whitney has a stellar career. She's his number one priority. Whitney, there is no reason not to trust Sid. Okay, our relationship is strictly professional. End of story. Chad, I've seen the way she looks at you. The way she touches you. She has a thing for you, Chad. <laughs> Relax, baby. Look, Sid is a kid. I can handle her. Whoa, you can handle her? <laughs> so you're saying you do realize that Sid does have a thing for you? <sighs> Teresa. You have to stop. You have to stop believing in our love because there is no place for it in our lives anymore. No, don't say that, Ethan. Teresa, it's true. I made a vow before God to be with Gwen, to love and to cherish her in sickness and in health till, till death do us part. But no time during that ceremony did Father Lonigan give me some kind of list of exclusions that might come in handy just in case I decided to be with you. You know how I feel about marriage. It is forever. I it know. It should be. I know. It should be. And I'm not going to abandon my wife and break my vows. You know, J Julian wasn't my real father, but I always hated the way in which he treated my mother, and I swore I would never treat my wife like that. And I'm not going to. But I should be your wife, Ethan. You <sighs> wanted to ask me to marry you. Teresa, it just... It just didn't happen that way. I mean... It, what was that John Lennon said? Uh, life is what happens when you're busy making other plans while well, life has happened to us, Teresa. And I had to move on. And you have to move on. You need to be happy. You need to find someone else and just forget about fate. Forget about us. Because whatever we had and whatever chance we had to be together, it is, it is over. There's just nothing that can change that. Please, please don't hurt me or my baby. It'll be over before you know what hit you. <laughs> God, this has been such a nightmare. 
good news, Sheridan. Your nightmare is about to end, along with your life. <laughs> no, no, please, no! She fainted. <gasps> oh, poor thing. Oh, yeah. Save your sympathy. We got work to do. Flood the whole basement. This is a gas line out to the street. I'm gonna smash this open so all the gas fills the house from top to bottom. That is so wasteful. Not to mention dangerous. <laughs> but I'm gonna booby trap this place. So when Luis finds out what Beth's been up to when he comes here to find Sheridan, he's gonna find a little surprise waiting for him. Yeah, exactly 30 seconds after Loverboy walks inside. All this leaked gas will ignite, and the whole house will explode, killing everyone in it. Blondie will bite the dust, and so will Luis. You are my passion for life. Forget about us. Forget about our love and fate. I'm sorry. It's the way it has to be. We need to move on. You need to forget about what we had together, and you need to forget about us. Forget? Ethan, how can I forget you? You're everything to me. You've always been in my heart, always, and I just can't erase you from my life. I mean, there, there would be nothing I'm left. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I don't know what to tell you other than it's just the way it has to be. And things just can't go on this way. But someday, you'll find someone, or he'll find you. And your eyes will meet. And you'll feel that spark, you know, that love ignites. And before you know. Dr. Culver? I'm sorry to interrupt, but I'm having trouble with some people out in reception. There's a pregnant woman who claims she's your patient, but I can't find any record of her ever being here as an obstetrics patient. I checked our computer files, but the woman isn't listed with your other pregnant patients. Well, maybe her file hasn't been moved over to my prenatal patients list yet. I suppose it's possible, but... What's the patient's name? Beth Wallace. Beth Wallace is pregnant? Is she ever? But I saw her recently. She wasn't pregnant then. Are you sure Ms. Wallace looks like she could pop at any minute? Something's not right. <laughs> I mean, even if Beth were pregnant, there's, there's no way she could be that far along. Seeing is believing. Very well. Let me just, uh, let me just finish up the notes of my last patient. I'll go out and see Beth, and we'll, we'll find out exactly what's going on. So you're going to kill Sheridan and Louise, along with any cops that come here to search for her? Would you rather spend your life in prison, your golden years in the slammer with a bunch of lonely women? <gasps> oh, no. Or you think Louise is going to buy your, your senile act that you didn't know Sheridan was being held hostage in your own house? Well, probably not, but I did mention that Beth was trying to kill Sheridan a couple of times. Then it's settled. The house blows to bits with everyone in it. Oh, no. Oh, poor Sheridan. To have hung on this long only to be killed with her baby and that hunk Louise in an explosion. Oh, oh, the idea of that lean, hard body of his in pieces all over town. 
<gasps> Instead of in bed pleasure in the woman that he really loves. Oh, oh, what a waste. Oh. I know, precious. You don't want Louise to die either, do you? <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> Isn't there any other way? You know, instead of a mass murder, particularly a loud and messy one to boot? Yeah, it'll be quick. And as for making a mess, you're one to talk. Oh! oh. Now, both of you, stand back. I got a trap to booby. Oh. Oh. Come on, Precious! Come Chad's life. You still didn't answer my question. That kiss was my answer. Baby, come on. All right. Look, no, I don't think Sid is after me. And even if she was, so what? It's you who I love. You and only you. Nothing and nobody will ever come between us. And I feel the same way about you. Good. Then we don't have a problem. And if we do, we can always work it out, as long as you trust in our love. Chad, I do love you. But Sid's just the first of many beautiful singers that you're going to be working with. I mean, can you honestly tell me that no matter how many beautiful women throw themselves at you, that you're always going to be faithful to me? Yes, Whitney. I can tell you that right here, right now. I will always be faithful to you. I swear it on our love. What is that? It's a gizmo. It gives off electrical sparks when a laser impulse hits it. Right here. Where does that <laughs> laser impulse thing come from? This baby. I'm going to put this over the door at the top of the basement stairs. It's activated by sensors I'm going to install on the, on the rear and the, and the front door. So no matter which way Luis comes inside to find Sheridan, he'll start a chain reaction of laser sensors. And it'll start at the outside door, come down to the basement door, and down here. Once this thingamajig gets the signal, it'll ignite a spark, and all the gas it's built up into the house will explode. Kaboom! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can smell that gas already. Yeah, yeah, the houses are filling up fast. Mm. <laughs> you know what? They, Sheridan may uh, die from asphyxiation before the explosion. Oh, like it matters. Oh, oh <laughs> Get Come on, let's there. go rig up the rest of these gizmos so we can get out of here. Poor Sheridan. She's really gonna die. Oh, angels. Angels, be with her. Help Sheridan and her baby rest in peace, please. dream last night. That horrible clown came to visit us and sunlight. So we Dear God, I can see outside. That smell. What's that smell? velvet gas all the way up here now. Are you sure there's enough to blow this whole house up? Positive. The place will be full in no time. Look at this. See 
See how the smoke is mixing with the gas? Oh, wow. <laughs> the house is filling up fast. Man. Luis blows in to save Sheridan. He'll set off my booby traps and blow the whole place to kingdom come. <laughs> What is that smell? <coughs> it's getting so hard to breathe. Someone help me! Whitney, baby, all that kissing stuff was, it was just business, okay? I've got to make Sid the best singer I can make her, make her CD the best I can if I'm going to have a long and high-paying career in the music business. But that's all this is, okay? I don't have any feelings for Sid as a woman, and I promise my eyes will never wander to any other beautiful singer. <laughs> You're the love of my life, Whitney. You. Nothing will ever change that. I do know that, but it sure is nice to hear you say it. <laughs> I love you so much. Right back at you, now and forever. And like I said, nothing and no one will ever come between us. <laughs> Sure, Chad's gonna do whatever he can to make sure Whitney's career is a success. I mean, it's, you know, not to say that he's gonna sacrifice you or your career for her. At least, well, not consciously, anyway. Still, you know, there's no denying he's gonna have to split his attention between you two. <laughs> it's kind of funny, but uh, I guess you could say Whitney's your only competition for Chad's attention. But, yeah, I'm sure that won't be a problem. No, it shouldn't be. I know how to get rid of my competition. I know how to get rid of Whitney. I bet you do, Sid. I just bet you do. <laughs> Forget fate. Forget our love. Can you forget that kiss? Can you just turn it and walk away from that kind of passion, Ethan? I didn't think so. Let me just toss my tools back here and we can hit the road. Oh, boy. All the triggers are set and is bursting at the seams with gas when Luis and his cop cronies show up to find Sheridan, kaboom! <laughs> All the evidence that Blondie was kidnapped will be obliterated, including Sheridan herself. As they say, dead women tell no tales. Hey, Edna, what are you doing in the passenger seat? I told you to be behind the wheel for our getaway. I plan to, but somebody else had other ideas. What the? You crazy monkey! You can't drive the car! No! Wait! Whoa! Stop! Hey, slow down! What do you think you're doing? Oh no! The cops! Dr. Culver, I don't mean to rush you, but Beth Wallace is, um, friend, the father of her child, is adamant that you see her right away. Okay, I'm almost finished. He says he's a police officer, that he saw you not long ago when Beth was in for a prenatal exam. What? I never saw any man with Beth Wallace. And this business of her being uh, so pregnant she could, as you say, pop any minute, it, it's ridiculous. I mean, I just saw Beth recently and uh, she wasn't pregnant. I don't know what's going on, but the other patients are afraid of how upset Beth's friend is getting. Oh, well, the last thing I need is patients having heart attacks in my waiting room. My malpractice insurance rates will go through the roof. 
All right, I'll go out and see Beth and uh, find out what's going on. Although I, I can't understand how she could possibly be pregnant, much less close to her due date. Louise, look, I feel fine. Can we just go now? No. Beth, for the last time, I am not leaving here until you see the doctor, okay? Look, I don't want to take any chances that something's wrong with our child. Hey! Hey, listen, I know you can hear me back there, all right? We're not leaving until we see the doctor. I want to see the doctor now! I've got to get out of here before the real Dr. Culver sees me, or it's all over. The kidnapping Sheridan won't have been for nothing. This is making it so hard to breathe. I'm becoming so weak and sleepy. <coughs> What's to become of me and my baby? <sighs> oh, God. I'm gonna die. I'm really gonna die, and there's nothing I can do to stop it. <coughs> <coughs> The guy, the receptionist, called Doctor. Your doctor is a woman. Who is he? What's the big secret? Why won't you tell me the name of the mystery woman you're in love with? I'm gonna learn so much from you. 